Friday. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Monday Night Live Stream. As you can see, I have John here, Mr. KG Tropicals. We're sitting here. Yes, I'm late. I sit here and I said, I'm going to wait for someone to say something before I go live. So <laughs> it was John that said, what are we waiting for? <laughs> oh, is this my computer? Wow. Oh, no, wait. What are you talking about? I got a, no, I'm sorry. I don't have the uh, sound oh, muted. Oh, on uh, feedback, huh? Yeah, I'm the amateur hour here. Sorry. Nah, There's always got to be something that goes wrong when I'm uh, when I'm on a stream. <laughs> so uh, let me look at the title <clears throat> of this stream: uh, Fish are commodities, yes, and not living animals. So I want to tell you guys a story. That's not actually how I feel, obviously. Um, clickbait. Exactly. Well, I wanted to clickbait to try to get as many people here as possible uh, because it is something that is very uh, disturbing. Uh, to put it lightly so if anyone was here on my Thursday live stream you guys know that I lost a ton of fish and uh, I mentioned that a lot of fish came in looking like they were beaten with a hammer just broken jaws bent spines all kinds of stuff so I started looking around doing some research talking to some people uh, basically trying to figure out what is going on with these fish and actually I put my phone away but I need my phone here um, I'm not going to name any names as far as where I got this information. I'm also not going to name any companies uh, yet. Um, I will say that this is one of the largest importers uh, in the U.S. That's about all I'll say. Um, so, again, I was trying to figure out why my fish are showing up just beaten badly. Um, this is what I found out. Uh, so, this place, this importer... They have no aquariums, no containers of water. The fish are imported. Um, they are dumped onto a rubber foam conveyor belt with no water. Uh, yeah, the belts are not submerged. The fish are out of water. Of course, my phone just went to sleep. Uh, let me go back. The fish are out of water as they go down the belts. As they go down the conveyor belt, they are sorted. Dead fish are removed. They are counted, taken from the conveyor belt, and then put into a bag of water where they sit until someone buys them. That is ridiculous. So the largest importer, um, one of the largest, I don't know if it's the largest because I don't know them all, but uh, it is a very large importer. Doesn't have a single aquarium or container or anything that even holds water. Um, and I've, I've seen this firsthand. I've seen the bags of fish um, with just, I mean, thousands of fish in like these 55 gallon bags that you'd use for, you know, like your, your, uh, trash, um, just sitting there with all dead fish in them, like, <laughs> cause they just sat there too long. Nobody bought them. Um, so yeah, obviously, you know, the stress, uh, the other thing is all fish go down the same belt. So any disease that a fish has it gets on the belt it is now spread to every other fish that sits on that conveyor belt and goes through that conveyor belt and this is like a, a you know this is a daily operation for these people um which is just crazy have you ever heard anything like that no which is why i'm kind of sitting here in shock like that's that's got me <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think about how to respond. I, I have not heard that. Um, now, I do want to be clear, though. This is not <clears throat> wholesalers. This is the importer. So this would be where, uh, like, Seagrest Farm or these other wholesalers buy from. So it's not them. We've all seen Seagrest and these other fish farms. Obviously, they have tanks and, uh, you know, things like that. So this is where they get them from, though. Uh, so these are the, the importers. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always called the. Are, wouldn't those be called like trans shippers? Isn't that, or yeah. is there something different? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I've always known trans shippers to be like the com or this is what I thought they were. They're basically the the go between between the people outside of this country and us. And I always thought that they would just have them delivered to them and then they would transfer them over. I didn't realize they were 
sending them down a conveyor belt. That's just, <laughs> that's crazy. That's madness. I, exactly. I've never heard that I didn't believe it either. Um, and again, I would name names if it only affected me and my business. But um, if I start naming names, then it could be traced back to where I got this information from. And I'm not out to, you know, hurt anyone else's relationship or their business, things like that. So that's why I won't name names yet. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary to name names anyway. I mean, it's it'd be one thing if you had a really horrible experience with an online retailer. But this is happening way before that online retailer. I, I don't know what difference it would make if you gave the names, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah, and it, uh, I don't know, it just, it is absolutely mind-blowing that they actually sort them on a conveyor belt out of water. And I, I don't know, I, I would really like to see how it's done. Um, not just pictures, but, like, can you imagine getting, like, 10,000 like chili rasboras and having to sort through them. Um, and apparently it's multiple species at the same time going down these conveyor belts, which is another reason why they get mixed up and sometimes you're shipped the wrong fish. Um, it, yeah. I mean, yes, it, it is. But... This is in the U S these are, this <laughs> is an importer or trans shipper in the U S. Yep. Somebody asked if this was in the U S the only similar thing I've ever seen that that bothered me was at a uh, an actual a wholesaler that was local to us it was an hour away but that's everything's an hour away from us and I remember going in there one time and you could actually go in and hand select your fish like we could even take a net and net our own fish if we wanted to um, and I went in there one time and there were like five fish nets and if you can imagine 45 fish in a in a net and then that net is a, another net full of fish is put on top of that one so you're holding five stems and there's like five nets and they each net have 40 fish in them i saw a guy walking with that and i was like man that's messed up he taking them all to a tank at the same time and he sets them on a counter like I guess taking a break or something. I don't know. And then I went all went on and was doing my thing. And then I come back like 10 minutes later, they're still sitting there. Fish are flopping. And I'm like, and I said to something, did you forget about them? And he's like, Oh, they'll be okay. I'm like what? <laughs> that, that blew my mind. It was a day where they received fish. And so there was a lot going on and they were taking fish here and moving fish over there. And so that, that kind of, that's nothing compared to what you're talking about. And that's at a completely different level. That's at the wholesale level. But, you know, I, as much as that bothered me, I can't imagine how much I'd be bothered by seeing fish go down a conveyor belt. That's just insane. Yeah, I, I was seriously, when I heard that, I'm like, there's no way that's true. Like fish on a conveyor belt, um, no water. And you see the, it just, when you see a, uh, like a 55 gallon clear plastic bag, full of dead fish um, and there's water in it so it's not like these were the dead fish they were picking out these are fish that sat in that bag that didn't sell and they sat there and all died it's just it's crazy to me it's crazy I don't and I would really like I said I would love to see it in person because like a lot of people say in the chat I don't know how you can like sort fish on a conveyor belt I, I don't know either um, I didn't get to see that part uh, but it's <laughs> The, it's the biggest the biggest question that I would have about that is how would PETA not be involved yet? You know, I mean, I know they don't prioritize fish the same way they do other animals, and, and I, it's fine. But how would something like that – PETA's ruthless when they need to be. How would they not have known something like that, and how would they not have done something about that by now? I, I can't imagine – I don't know. I'm not sitting here telling you that the story's BS, but it sounds, it just sounds too outrageous. I don't know. How, how would it, they be allowed to get away with that for any length of time? I, I don't That's crazy. Yeah. And so basically, I mean, obviously it's, they're just trying to sell fish before they die. So it's a race for them. But, um, you know, I don't even know if wholesalers know, there's some that know because I've talked to them. Um, I will say that going forward, I'm not going to be ordering any fish that come from this place anymore, um, which pretty much puts me down to only back to having 
uh, one vendor to order from besides um, like all the, uh, the hobbies bread and the Gary Lang stuff that I have. Um, so I'm going back down to one wholesaler that actually imports directly and doesn't go through a trans shipper. Uh, so at least there's another step taken out. And uh, so I've been talking to them as well. And it's kind of nice because they're like including me, like we're going to import from here. Is there anything you want? So um, that's kind of cool, but still. There it goes. I mean, I wish I, I mean, I mean, obviously they're, they're one of the largest, so they have one of the largest selections and I'm going to lose a lot, but I just, and I lo I'm like the lowest man, you know, I'm in there supplying like Petco's and PetSmart and all these other places. And here I am buying a, a few hundred dollars a week worth of fish. So I'm nothing to them. They don't even know I exist, but still I can't, I can't buy from them anymore. Yeah. I don't blame you. A lot of people in the, in the chat are, are giving their opinions about PETA, I was not saying what I was saying in support of what PETA does. Uh, they've done a lot of things that I don't care for. I wasn't endorsing PETA. What I was saying was I've seen PETA come down on businesses for micro things, like little things. And how would they not respond to something like that is what I was saying. I wasn't trying to say PETA's this great organization or anything like that. Just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, well, that's kind of what I got out of it, but <laughs> we all know once, you know, organizations get, or, or you know, any, anything gets that big, it really just comes about the money. So they got to have some kind of financial game to go after it probably, but that's a whole other talk for yeah. a different <laughs> podcast. <laughs> and I apologize for even bringing it up, but that, I mean, it, how dare you talk it, about PETA? But I mean, you are <laughs> absolutely right in that fish are never going to get, and reptiles for that matter, are never going to get recognized, you know, the same as like dogs and cats and rabbits whatever there was a uh, a store in virginia beach virginia that was called animal jungle and they had a they had a, one of those cat what are they called servals or something like that Servals. one of those african cats that's what i want uh, and it, it was absolutely gorgeous they had this cat in a enclosure that's like something you would have seen at the zoo i mean it was this massive room and then there was a tunnel that went across the top to another big giant room. It was unbelievable what this cat had. Uh, probably a thousand square feet dedicated strictly to this one cat. And PETA was outside picketing that, you know, and trying to get that business shut down. So that's what I'm saying. It's like you, you've got this animal that's actually got it better than probably most out there. Like most and zoos even. Like. Exactly. I mean, and, and it was... I guess servals have become kind of popular, but when, when he had that, it, like nobody had that, you know, that uh, nobody that I had known, I had never even heard of him at the time. So I guess it was kind of the rarity of the fish. It was almost like it was in a zoo. I mean, it, it was really, really nice. And I would get mesmerized by that thing every time I was there, but they were trying to shut him down for that. If you're going to shut him down for that, why would you not be looking at a place that sends fish down a conveyor belt? I mean, sounds like a couple of teenagers and sounds like anyway, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. uh, it's, it's, oh man, I couldn't believe it. And like, so I have all these rainbow fish now with like bent spines and broken jaws. And I'm talking like their jaws are like straight off their face. Um, and I'm gonna have to put them all down. The ones that survived, most of them died, but, it's uh just sucks it sucks well and that's like I i'm assuming you have absolutely no recourse at all too right like there's nothing you can do you can't get any money back or anything nope nope so the way the way that i had it set is that i do go through a wholesaler um but obviously they don't offer all of the fish that this that the um trend shipper offers um, so I would specifically email the wholesaler and say, can you get this fish special order for me? And so since they were special ordering all these rare rainbows for me, they weren't going to guarantee anything, uh, which, you know, I wouldn't really expect them to, but, um, I can't really have them taking on all the risk, you know? Yeah, that's nuts. I mean, that's just mu not only, I, I know money is not the most important thing, but it hurts when you lose that much money. That's, uh, man, that's devastating. Not only did the fish get mistreated, but you're out a bunch of money. It's not good. You know, and, and the other uh, fishy fund says, where are the government inspectors? There's probably not much regulation on things like that for fish. 
I can't imagine I that think so. the regulations are anywhere near that of like dogs or cats. Well, and see, that's the kind of thing like, like what what he was talking about. That was kind of the point I was trying to make with PETA. It was like, how how are you, this guy from Seattle, how are you the first to find out about this? You know what I mean? Like, it's just weird that a government agency or a, a, a political organization of some type wouldn't have that and, and have run with it already. I, I just, I don't know. It sounds crazy, but... I'm not calling your friend a liar, but that's... Uh... Well, it's... Uh, well, I've, I've seen the picture, so... Um, oh, okay. It's, uh, you know, you have government officials going in there. They don't know any better. You, you you know, if they're not, like, animal experts or fish experts, they're just there to inspect things that are up to code. Um, you know, and they're saying, yeah, the fish are fine going out of conveyor belt. They're just out of water for a couple minutes. Everything's fine. If, you know, how would they even know? I mean, if they were supporting the food industry... If they were sardines, uh, that would kind of lessen the blow a little bit. But for the pet industry, I, I don't know. I just can't. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You got me all flabbergasted tonight. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I can verify that it's 100% true. It's just, I don't know. And, and I, I, again, I think it's the uh, maybe the just how fish are treated or viewed. Like, oh, they're just fish. It's just a fish. So they might. You know, maybe there is people going in there and inspecting it, and they're like, ah, it's just fish. And, and you know what? To be fair, like, if I have 200 neon tetras and I lose a tetra, am I going to cry for a week like my dog, like when my dog dies? No. But still, right. it's still, you know, a living animal. And, uh, yeah, it's just crazy that, I don't know. Can you imagine, like, getting in, like, a hundred dogs and then putting them on a conveyor belt and picking out all the dead ones? <laughs> yeah, see, and that, and it, so I, I totally understand what you're saying, and I completely agree with you, because you just saying that, like, sent a feeling through me, like, I would want to kill somebody <laughs> if I knew that was going on with puppies. But with fish, it makes me mad, and it makes me want to, you know, people are talking in the in the chat about doxing these people. I hate that word, but it makes me mad, but I don't want to commit murder <laughs> that like I would if it was, I, I wouldn't murder anybody, but you understand what I'm saying? It would make me so mad if that was happening with dogs or cats at a different level than it does for fish. But, but it angers me for fish too. I mean, it, it's, I don't even know. I'm just digging my grave here tonight. <laughs> well, uh, Melody says, imagine if that was Little Steen, so my Mabu Puffer, well, my Mabu Puffer more than likely went down that conveyor belt at some time um, just because I know where it came from when I ordered it from my local fish store. So now that I'm aware of, like, the wholesalers and where they get their fish, it probably went down that conveyor belt at some time. You know, uh, so so the question becomes, what do you do? Like... Obviously, you're not going to buy from there anymore. I wouldn't expect you to. And So, the only thing I can think of is actually, um, you know, promoting people like Dan's Fish, who is building his import business um, ethically. And when you do see all the stuff he's doing, like his 75 new tanks, um, you know, he's not, he's bypassing all of these people, which is insane. And... You just, I mean, I, I don't know what I want to do. So here's, it's kind of interesting because obviously Dan sells fish online. I sell fish online. We all, you know, a lot of people sell fish online. There's enough people that we're not, I don't really view him as a competitor. I view him as like a colleague and a friend. And sure. we talk, me and him talk all the time um, about the business. And, and I think he's going to do some really good things. And I hope... Uh, it, it probably sounds funny telling everyone to go support Dan's fish, but um, you know I'm scaling back and going to mostly rainbow fish. Whereas he's he's going like all out, all out, and uh, I hope that we can support someone like that enough to get him enough buying power to actually make change. Um, and I think that's his goal as well. I think he said that in his live stream, you know, but. Well, you Other know, that, I don't know what else to do. I mean, obviously, none of us are big enough to change this giant corporation. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean, if enough of us did something about it, but well, see, yeah, that's I mean, the thing. It, we are. It is kind of tricky because without giving the name of of who that organization is, let me turn my camera a little bit here. I'm uh, noticing. Just uh -oh. got my door in there, <laughs> but anyway. Um, I'm sure there are a lot of us that would say, well, if there's a uh, if there's a retailer that we know of that uses that place, we'll no longer buy fish from that retailer and stuff like that. I mean, I, I get it. There'd be a lot of people that would do that. Um, but I, I, I find it hard to believe that we could put a stop to it. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just too... Is that cynical? Am I too cynical? Is I, that... I really think we can. I really think, and by we, I mean like Dan and what he's doing. Um, just seeing how much he's grown in the last, like even year is pretty insane. Um, and everyone's like saying, name the company, name the company. Well, honestly, it wouldn't even matter um, because you guys wouldn't be able to, it, there's no way you'd be able to walk into a fish store and know where those fish came from. Like you could ask an employee, the employee is going to say, well, it came from this wholesale company. Well, where did the wholesale company get them from? Well, that, you know, the dude making a minimum wage at Petco is not going to know that. Right. Um, and there there might be a time. Like I said, this is all new information. Um, and uh, like I said, I have, I have not going to name the company yet. Yet. Well, and there is the threat of lawsuits. I mean, we do live in a litigious society and a social media post that 191 people are seeing you know and there's going to be thousands by the time this goes on replay you know that's justification for uh some kind of a lawsuit so yeah you definitely don't want that but well i will say i do have very good lawyers oh uh, so i'm not really worried about that um yeah like what like a defamation lawsuit or something whatever I mean, dis, uh, just uh, slander was America, freedom of speech. <laughs> I mean, I agree, but you know, people get sued for hot coffee. I'm just saying. And when that's what's disturbing. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jobs Aquarium tanks with the four dollar and twenty cent super chat says, "What's the over under on KG losing subs this stream?" <laughs> that's only when Bob comes on my channel. <laughs> yeah, that's I don't think you got to worry subs. about it now. <laughs> Uh, Matthew Vargas says, Bob, what if you had a successful fish retail business like Aquarium Co-op? Would you just give up all that business and money because of this issue? I would. Uh, because if you're, if I was as big as Aquarium Co-op, um, at that point you could just import your own fish. So if I was as big as Dan's fish, I could Im import my own fish. Um, I got like 50 tanks. I can't, I can't, like the minimum order on an import is like five grand, 10 grand. I can't do that with 50 tanks. <laughs> it's just not going to happen. Well, and you know, there is something to be said about the specialty retailer. And that's what you are. I mean, it sounds like you're kind of morphing into specializing in rainbows and, and stuff like that, which I think is awesome. Um, we, you and Dan and, and all of them, they're... It, it's a different clientele than what is shopping at a Petco or a PetSmart. You know, those companies are going to be sending fish to Petco's and PetSmart's and Walmart's that still sell fish. It's it's never going to stop. You're not going to put a stop to that. It's too big. Uh, but the smaller mom and pops like the aquarium co-ops, like Dan's Fish, like your business, I think that there is a, a, a clientele that will appreciate that you've done this you know, you're getting your fish from reputable breeders or fish farms, direct from the farms, direct from the breeders. And because of that, your fish are a couple dollars more. This particular clientele, I think, will have no problem paying that premium. So I, I think that, I don't know, I almost feel like this is something that it, the more people know about it, the better off companies like yours and Dan's will be. Maybe yeah, I'm I mean, wrong. It, but... it makes sense. I mean, I would. I mean, I would pay money if I was a consumer. Um, absolutely, I would pay a couple of bucks more. Um, we have a new member, Moonstone. Welcome to the Steamfot Show. Thank you. That's first new member that I've had in quite a while. So thank you. I appreciate it. That gets me to sixty. A whopping sixty. I don't know if I get anything at sixty, but 
it's a milestone because it's an even number. So there. <laughs> um, Congratulations. It, I'm also not naming the business because I assured the person that I got all the inside information from that I wouldn't. So I'm not about to betray someone's trust yet. Will you please ask answer this person that's asked this question 18 times? I haven't even been paying attention to chat, so what is it? <laughs> Which one should I read, the first one or the 18th? I don't know. Uh, can tropical pleco, rainbow fish, tetras, loaches, and cichlids live in 72 degree water for 12 hours and the other 12 hours in 78 degrees? I don't even understand the question, so... Can, your tropical, can a pleco, rainbow fish, tetra, <laughs> loaches, cichlids? Uh, yeah. So basically, your water is heating up during the day and then cooling to out, at, cooling off at night is what it sounds like. And that doesn't seem like a problem to me at all. Oh, so yeah, it'd be a gradual thing. And okay, yeah. Yeah, if you're just I, I like get... dumping them back and forth like super fast, that might cause some issues. And that's what I thought this person was asking 18 times, and it like. It's like, what are you going for there? What is that? What is that question? Okay, sorry. I just made you look bad. Hey, look. Jimmy's here. Mr. Ignore my post all weekend, last four days. Ignored my last four days of messages. But he comes to my live stream, so I guess he doesn't hate me. I thought I was getting shunned. Unshunned. And he's shouting out Lucas. Jimmy's never shouted me out. I said on my stream live that he was my favorite YouTube channel. He's never shouted me out. That punk because he doesn't go to your live streams because every time he goes there they're choppy and audio oh cuts shut out. up <laughs> how dare you that's mean you're just mean tonight <laughs> uh got another member uh look at this pirate pirate ryman uh i'm just gonna call you pirate mr pirate thank you for becoming a member <laughs> Um, how many Oscars can fit in the 10 gallon? That's pretty common. <laughs> That's um, fun. Everyone already see Jimmy. This is why I don't think Jimmy comes to my chats very often because everyone is already asking about Swiss kebab and when's our uh, next podcast going to be. And then, and then Jimmy leaves. Don't make him leave guys. <laughs> oh, geez. What is this? <laughs> Welcome, Mr. KG Tropicals, to the Steam Pot Show. Now oh, I'm gonna lose that's... members. <laughs> it was bad enough I'm losing subscribers. Now I'm gonna lose members. <laughs> oh, fun, fun. All right, fun. so that's about all I had to talk about on this topic. Um, I, I'm just glad that I was able to pinpoint the problem. Normally. Uh, when I have issues, I can never figure out what the issue is. So this time, I did. I find out why it looked like my fish have been through war, because they have been. Well, and you know, God, it's so weird that these companies don't, they don't have any responsibility for this. Like, I understand the, the middleman to the middleman doesn't want to take responsibility, so they're not going to guarantee them. But it's just weird that you can get all these fish that are busted up like that, and you, you're just like, oh well, you know, like I, that's just bizarre to me that that's what the what the industry does. You know what I mean? It's just it's ridiculous. Yeah. The, uh, here's here's one thing that I foresee fish tube changing and that is industry standards since i've been on youtube now like three years four i don't know three and a half years four years um uh, i feel like the industry standards are kind of changing for the better and i think it's because there's so many videos on fish on youtube now there's so many youtubers um and i think as it continues to grow i think we'll gradually start seeing more change um hopefully you know things like this will come to light more often and we can start maybe changing industry standards i don't know but i feel like it's already begun to change compared to um you know what it was in 2016 when i started youtube but i don't know i wish i wish there would be more 
aquatic experiences because that's kind of how I gauge by how many fish they killed every year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they seem to have gone down. So I don't know. Uh, $20 super chat from Michael Trevino. Here's a good question for you guys. What's the difference between a fish keeper and a person that collects fish? Um, one collects and one keeps them? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the collector keeps them, so I think wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, I read it as someone who's going out and collecting fish out of the stream. Not like a collector, like you're collecting bobbleheads. So that's why I thought you moved the camera to show all your bubble heads because you're covered. Well, up. I just like I saw like the it was just showing so much of the door. That's why I moved it. My door over there. Um, so I guess there's no difference between a fish keeper and a person that collects fish if it's like us as in multiple tank syndrome type of people. But I read it as like someone who goes out and collects them out of the wild. I don't know. Well, and it, hmm. I don't know. You could kind of go deep with that. Like a collector is, is the collector someone that's more serious? Like, because they're collecting very specific fish. So they're taking extra special care and fish keepers are just people who have fish. You know, is that where he was going? I don't know, but you never know I, that guy. Is that the is that Mile High Plecos? Is that yeah. who that is? Okay, I not this week. I, this week he's Michael Trevino. Yeah. Next week it'll be a purple circle and it'll be Mile High Trevor or something. <laughs> the uh, only reason is because I saw the green stripe. I was like, that that looks like Mile. I know. Plecos. I hate when he changes it too. It was pink or purple for a long time. So, I know why, but Ken Wood asks. Why are trophies not popular to fish keepers? Or are they? I don't think they are. And I think they have a lot of negative press, air quotes, um, that's not necessarily true. But I, I think they're... So I've, I have trophies currently. And I remember when I first started getting into trophies, people were like, oh, they're so nasty. They're jerks. They kill everything. And I haven't seen that at all. Like I've seen no aggression with these trophies, and that doesn't mean that they're they're not aggressive. They're African cichlids, um, right? You know they are, but I don't know. I think there's just a lot of um, bad press when it comes to them, and I don't think they're as angry or as hard to keep. A lot of people think they're really hard to keep as well. But uh, what do you think? Well, it, it it is no different than African cichlids in general. I mean, African cichlids have a a reputation of being oh they're aggressive they're going to kill each other and and that's all they do is fight and all that there are a lot of people that believe that i think a uh, it's the same thing uh, my experience with trophies i have kept them uh they're no more aggressive than in bonus i mean yeah they're from they originate from a different lake but um they remind me very much of in bonus as far as the way you want to keep them and the 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 way you want to set up your tank and their aggression level and their size and all of that um, why aren't they popular? I think Africans as a whole are kind of down right now. Um, Especially like Tanganyikans. Yeah, I mean, Tanganyikans have always been uh, less popular than Malawis. Malawis are, are going to be fish that appeal to everyone. Tanganyikans are going to be the fish that appeal to hardcore fish keepers that want the shell dwellers and the frontosas and well frontosas are popular but um but i think that right now i think that trophies were kind of they were kind of coming up and maybe it's because joey had one and had them in a tank i don't know but they were kind of coming up and then the african cichlid world just kind of died off and it became all about planted tanks nanos and all that thanks Corey. uh but right now, I think it is, as far as trends go, I think we're on a little downturn with Africans. But a year from now, it might be the reverse, and Africans are the hottest thing in the world again. And and if they are trophies, you'll see a lot more of them. But I, I you'll the, never see them. I, th I think the other thing is they have a completely different diet than like Malawi's as well. Uh, way more vegetarian. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, you're not going to mix them. Most people aren't going to mix them with embonas, though. But I mean, sure, their diet's different. You throw a different pellet in there. So what? I mean, it's not not a hard thing to do. But as far as tank size and the way you set the tank up and all that kind of stuff, it's pretty much the same. Over filter, more the bigger the better. That's what she said. And you know, give them different pellets. So what? Uh, Mike says, Bob, did you see the epistogramma pic I posted in your Facebook group? Pretty sweet looking fish. Yes, they were. They were. Um, I actually, speaking of Trophius, uh, messaged Priscilla like a couple hours ago saying, hey, what kind of Trophius can you get? I, w I want more Trophius in my life. I've been jonesing for Trophius. Um, I said I had some. I have about four. That's about it. And um, I want a giant colony of Trophius. I don't know why. Well, Any I mean, particular... Tanganyikans in general uh, are my basically my second favorite fish, like Cipacromus behind Rainbow Fish. And I haven't really seriously kept Tanganyikans for a long time, and I want to get back into them. And uh, I saw it in the chat here. I don't know who said it, but they said not all African cichlids are um, aggressive. That is true. That is true. Well, yeah, and I wasn't making the argument that they were. What I was no, saying I, was I said that they, they were, have a... I, I, I just made the blanket statement that oh, oh, they're okay. Africans. They're aggressive. Obviously, yeah. I, I would say a majority of them are, so it's still fair to say that. But, like, my Cipacromus, my Paracipacromus are the most peaceful fish in the world. So, yeah, obviously. There's plenty of fish that come from those three lakes that are not aggressive at all. But as a whole, African cichlids kind of have a reputation. That doesn't mean they are that way, but they've been labeled that way as being super aggressive. But all you got to do is know how to keep them, and then you'll be fine. Watch some KG Tropicals videos. You'll be all right. <laughs> Pam says, John, you are right. Africans are hard to find because of the nano fish. I was at a local fish store, and they said they can't take up the space because people aren't buying African cichlids. Um, Africans have never been popular in the Northwest, ever. It seems like they're all over the place on the East Coast. At least they were. Um Back when I was in Africans, uh, I couldn't, like, the selection I had was awful. But every, every, everyone on the East Coast had all different kinds of African cichlids. So I was super jealous. That was probably, I don't know, five years ago when I was really big into Africans. I mean, they're still awesome. And, you know, there's still plenty of people out there. If I did an African cichlid video this week, it would do well. I mean, there's still plenty of people out there that, that love them, but they're, it's kind of like discus, you know, you don't hear a lot about discus right now. That doesn't mean they're one of the most beautiful, they're not one of the most beautiful fish out there. Just they're not, you know, the wave is not up for them right now. They will be because that's what this industry does. It goes up and down, up and down. So, you know, before you know it, it'll be all about Africans and discus again. Right now it's kind of, it's the, the two polar opposites. It's nanos and it's monster fish. That's kind of what is the popular thing right now at least in my opinion i could be totally i'm just gonna wrong, change but... my business model to whatever fish joey shows a video of i'm gonna buy a thousand <laughs> of them <laughs> so you're gonna be keeping waru and flower horn and gouramis and if that's, Asian what, if that's the flavor of the week then that's what i'll buy <laughs> I, I, hey I mean, you can't say that's a bad business model. It would work. I <laughs> it promise would you. work. It would absolutely work. Somebody could totally <laughs> make a business and just follow whatever's pop. I mean, think if think if one of us um, had mud skippers because mud skippers are frigging everywhere for like the last four months. Ever since uh, Zenzo got mud mm -hmm. skippers, now everybody's getting mud skippers. If I brought those in, I could be you know that's a, that's a gold mine for the last three months. See the the mud skippers, they're really cool. I don't have one. I never have had one. I think the the novelty of them is going to wear off and after the, a it while. It always does. Yeah. I mean, they're really cool and they're really neat. And you know, yeah, Zenzo did a good thing there, but uh, it's not going to last much longer. But the 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 nano fish and the community fish and you know, South Central American cichlids, they're they're always going to be popular. They're never going to go anywhere. So. I don't know. I don't know what I was trying to say. I don't know either. <laughs> I, I have, never know. Half the time, I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh, Mike over at Fish Tank Barn says, shell dwellers are like printing gold. Well, I don't know that I would go that far. <laughs> but I think possibly. Possibly. 
but I think it would have to be, I don't know, you might have good luck with them. I have good luck with my multis, but I don't know that I would go as far as let's say it's like printing gold. <laughs> I would say like guppies, <laughs> as sad as it is, guppies, endler, shrimp, those are always going to be like good sellers. I don't know why, but they're always popular. Uh, Bob Kaler says, with the $5 super chat, thank you, my friend. Uh, Bob, so for whatever reason, now we're going way off topic, but he says, Oddball Fisher King. Um, everybody in the state of Tennessee bought fish from me last week. I've, <laughs> all of my packages that I'm sending out tomorrow, only one of them are not going to Tennessee, which is. I don't know if you guys all got to give all, you know, they had like a, a YouTube meetup. Right. I don't know if they all got together and be like, let's buy a fish from Bob. Uh, the problem is, is that the temperatures are getting down into the twenties. So I don't know if you guys actually want me to ship all your fish. Um, so I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to email everyone after the live stream and find out, but. So was it, was it uh, James and Bob and rack and Ed, is that who ordered them all? <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna. I'm not, I mean, I don't know if they want people to know, but um, there, there's quite a few uh, ginger gray. I didn't ask for their credit card, Bob, but <laughs> I know ginger doesn't care, so I'll say ginger graves, uh, buy some fish, and uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm really because it was a holiday weekend. I know packages are already gonna be backed up, and normally it's only two days to Tennessee, but I have a feeling this week it might be three, which would put him in that really cold weather. So I don't know. Uh, Bob Kaler says, yes, I know people, Bob. Yeah. Bob Kaler is a very popular guy in this community for sure. It breaks my heart that he's not going to be in Maryland next month for the big fish deal. Really? I thought he was going. Oh, last I heard he wasn't able to go. Uh, everybody else that lives in the state of Tennessee is going to go, mm. but uh, I don't think he's going to be able to go. Last I heard, anyway. Maybe things have changed, and if so, that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Lumpy, Lumpy this... Dog says, good old-fashioned Tennessee fish fry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Those are expensive fish. <laughs> hey, those guys in Tennessee are coming up now. You better watch out for them. They're, they're coming strong. They're everywhere. I feel like I could turn on YouTube at any time, whether it's noon or 2.30 in the morning, and one of them is live streaming, and I always lurk. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> uh, Matthew Vargas says, with the $2 Super Chat, what are you getting in this week? I have zero fish coming in this week. This week is all about getting all of the fish I already have on the website uh, for sale. Like, um, So I'm, I'm going to be taking pictures and getting the website updated because I haven't done it for a while. Um, so, yeah, nothing new as far as ordering fish. But there'll be new stuff on the website, like endlers, um, a lot of the rainbow fish species that I got, the rare ones that came in healthy will be on the website, so things like that. No plecos. Actually, yes, I do have plecos that will be going on the website. Uh, butterfly plecos. Adult butterfly plecos. Uh, $50 super chat. Oh, jeez. $50 super chat from Michael Trevino. Plecos are cooler. Do you even keep any plecos, John? Do I keep any plecos? Yeah, we've got like 12 or 13 of I mean them. like yeah. real plecos, not like common plecos or self-in plecos. I do have a common pleco, but no, we've got we've got a bunch of bristle nose. We've got two vampires, which you might consider to be just like commons, but um, Elisa's got a bunch of them. I don't know what they are. She just bought two last weekend. I think she bought two. No, it was two weekends ago. She was in Virginia Beach and stopped at a place and bought two. I don't remember what they are. She can tell you in the chat. Um, they're really cool. That's all I know. And uh, we probably got 12 to 15 of them spread out through the Snowball tanks. Snowball plecos. Snowball plecos. There you go. I don't know what that is. So, Michael Trevino, I would absolutely love to do like a $1,000 order of plecos and get in all kinds of sweet stuff. Uh, the problem is, is that it would cost thousands. Um, and this is why I haven't brought in plecos. Say, say there's a like if I buy one pleco at wholesale, it's twenty dollars. But if I buy thirty of that pleco, now they're ten dollars each. 
And so you have to buy like massive amounts of all these plecos to get them at a good price to compete with everyone else. And I'm just not at a place where I can spend like two grand on plecos right now. If I could drop two thousand dollars on plecos right now, I would have so many. Um, and then the other problem is that they probably wouldn't sell because they're real. They're still really expensive. <laughs> so. That's the yeah. issue I have with plecos. And we don't have anybody making exclusively ple pleco videos now that Jeffro's disappeared. Yeah, that's true. There's not like a, a pleco. Um, the I, th I think a, what's changed in YouTube also, uh, you know, speaking of like pleco videos, are, are like species profile videos. Um, nobody's really doing them anymore because nobody watches them anymore. And everybody always says they want species profile videos, but nobody watches them. It's interesting. I think you and I had a question, of, or not a question, but a conversation about that and I think the consensus was somebody needs to just record like 200 of them and just upload them all at the same time just to have them as part of the catalog. It's evergreen content. The, the stuff is never going to change. It's just there. People will be watching them. But, you know, who's got the time to do that? <laughs> yeah, I know. I, that's what I said I was going to do in February. Like, I'm just going to do all species profile videos all day, every day. But... I, think I've I mean, because the, the whole idea of that nobody watches them, it's it's not true. If Rachel does one, it gets a lot of views. But you are right. Generally, they're not going to get as many views, but they'll build up views over time. So that's fine. Yeah, it's like um, my video this weekend was about the turquoise rainbow fish, and I got like one view. But <laughs> check back in in like two years, and it'll be at like thirty or 40,000 views. <laughs> So that's what, I mean, I don't, that's why I don't care. Like, yeah, I don't got a couple of views, but over over time, it'll add up. Just like my Bozmani rainbow fish is up to like seventy thousand views from like three years ago. So I don't have a problem doing them. I think somebody could build a huge YouTube channel just doing that if they did it right, and that's the difficult thing because you're going to run out of fish to do profiles of eventually. You know what I mean? So I don't know why I just flickered on the screen there. I hope everything's okay. Um, but if somebody did like took the Jimmy approach, because if you think about it, if Jimmy was to do a species profile video, it would be the most beautiful species profile video anybody's ever done. If you could put that kind of time into it and that kind of effort, but where are you going to get the footage to do the video of? You know what I mean? Unless you have every kind of fish in the world. Yeah, so it would basically be just like stealing content to make your videos. So my last species video um, that was this weekend on the turquoise, like the first two minutes of the video is all stock footage. It's none of my footage. <laughs> so, you know. Well, and you know what? If anyone is considering doing something like this, don't be afraid to go to fish stores and stand in front of their tanks and film their fish there. I mean, I did that today. It's not... Not a big deal. Most of them will let you do it. I'm looking at Jimmy's channel right now to see. I know he's done at least one species profile video, and I think it was on uh, Pandagaras. I'm just curious to see how it did. But he had a helper. I don't know. Is he still here? Probably not. He had a helper. What do you mean he had a helper? He had a he had a um, like a, a digital assistant like on that uh, oh god what's that superhero movie Iron Man you know how he has like a uh, Alexa or whatever his version of Alexa Jarvis yeah whatever he was doing that in a couple of his videos for a minute and it was kind of fun hmm I don't see it oh well. People are saying they can't see me. It's weird. I, I, I mean, I see me on both of my screens. I'm looking at our stream here on two screens, and I'm perfectly clear on both of them. I don't know. Um, I see you on OBS and YouTube as well. Okay. I mean, if you can't see me, you're not missing much. I mean, let's be real. Yeah, if anyone, it would be me that you can't see because uh, my computer sucks. Is this so John the new can't one? see me on Skype for all you people that know or don't know. My webcam does not 
Windows doesn't allow uh, two programs to use one webcam, so that is the downfall yeah, of Windows. Very frustrating. Uh, does anyone know what happened to Jeffro? Jeffro was in my Thursday live stream because we were talking about him, and then somebody messaged him to come on the live stream. So yeah, he said he's um, like working on his fitness and things like that. So he's doing all right. He's lost like 500 pounds or something. And uh, yeah, he's been doing really well. So that's uh, too real for YouTube. That's what's going on with Jeff Rose. Um, and then Ryan, I don't know if you follow Wild Fish Tanks. Wild Fish Tanks, no. Fish Tanks in the Wild or Wild Fish Tanks anyways. Uh, he hasn't posted a video in like two months. But he still posts regularly on Instagram, so at least he's alive, I would assume. Oh, you're talking about Challenge the Wild, that young guy? Not Challenge the Wild. Well, I don't know. It's Wild Fish Tanks. I'm pretty sure that's it. Okay. It's Wild something. Not Challenge the Wild, though. Not him. Anyways. Okay. Uh, but Red yeah, I mean, Jeff Rose... Jeff Rose showed up at uh, Aquashella in Chicago. What? He did? Yeah, made a surprise appearance. Got to meet him there. Uh, got a little video of him with uh, Mike Howe saying hi to Lisa, and I sent that to her. Uh, he didn't make a big deal out of it. I don't think he did any videos or anything there. He just kind of, I turned around, and there was Jeff Rose. I was like, oh, hey, what's going on? So it was cool. <clears throat> huh. Because I, yeah, I was, was told that he was going to go, and then I told that he's not going. So, uh, he's one of those guys just trying to make a dramatic entrance. I mean, it, it was, it was interesting because it, he just, he just was there. <laughs> you so now know, and, everyone's asking what happened to Greg Jones. So now I got to look at his channel. Oh, I just saw Greg at uh, aquatic experience. When was the last oh. time he's uploaded? I don't know. Five months ago. Holy smokes. Whoa. Well, you know, he he probably got to a point maybe where my aquarium box was just too successful and overtook YouTube. I don't know. I, don't, I mean, I don't even know if he still does that, but people get you busy. know people get busy. I I mean, I've done the same thing. I mean, it's you know, how many channels we could go through the list of channels that have come and gone, and channels that had a lot of promise that probably could have been one of the biggest channels out there right now if they had stuck to it and they just disappear. I mean, it, life gets in the way, priorities get, you know, shifted around and contrary to what a lot of people want to believe, I'm not trying to go on a pity party here, but running a YouTube channel is a lot more work than people think it is. And you know, in when you're in their first few years and you're literally making zero from it, it can get pretty frustrating to put all the time and effort into it and not make any money. So uh, yeah, I, this is why I, I people come and go. I feel like there is this, like people have like a false expectation of how much YouTubers actually make. And uh, I, I know it's exciting to get monetized and, um, you know, it's kind of a big deal, but that shouldn't be like your motivation because at that point you're only making like a dollar anyways. So <laughs> Right. <laughs> I could probably rifle off 10, 15 YouTubers that I've known that have started, been all gung ho. They get to that monetization level, and then they, after a couple of years or whatever, they're working it, they're grinding. They just have this kind of wake up call where they're like, wait a minute, I'm working like 25, 30 hours a week. I'm doing two live streams, I'm all over the place, and I'm making $40 a month. You know, it's like, it's not worth it. I'm taking time away from my family. I'm taking this, that. I mean, so many people I know have, have done that. And I get it. I totally understand. It's not, you know, it gets to a point where if you're taking seri taking it seriously and wanting to, to really build it up, it gets overwhelming. And it's not for everybody. I know that. I mean, look at me. I walked away for a year and a half. So I'm glad to be back, but you know, same thing happened to me. I'm just saying, uh, sorry, I'm going back through chat now. I'm saying, uh, Michael says, I guess I need to stop super chatting. I'm trying to scroll up and see if I missed another super chat, but I don't think so. Uh Oh, probably mad about something I said. Wouldn't be the first time. 
Uh, I'm too old to figure out YouTube. I would love to do videos of all my hobbies. It w so YouTube really has to be a hobby first for a long time. So unless, I, I think like, if you're not having fun making videos, then you shouldn't be on YouTube. Which seems obvious, but I, I feel like there are some people out there that are just trying to do it just to become monetized. And it really affects their content a lot. It certainly can. And it, it can certainly frustrate that particular YouTuber because things will not happen as quickly as they want them to. You do have stories out there uh, in our, well, I don't know if you want to include it in our community, but uh, in the, the pet tube community, you have the Taylor Nicole Deans and the Paul Cafaros that blew up out of nowhere. You know, they're also very, very talented at what they do. Um, and there's a reason why they blew up and they're working hard. I mean, whatever, I, I'm going to get a lot of flack for saying that, but you understand what I'm saying. I mean, they're, they're not like on a whim making a video just for no reason and making, you know, however much money they're making. They, they put time and effort and all that into it, but they're like people that picked up a winning lottery ticket for the most of us. The overwhelming majority of YouTube, it takes years and years of grinding and making nothing, losing actually, because you're paying for equipment and bandwidth and all of this kind of stuff. And after a while, it gets to a point where you uh, start to question whether it makes sense. And uh, I mean, the, the biggest one that comes to mind for me is the Rick. I don't know if he might've been before your time, but I'm sure you've I probably seen- I have a video seen... with the Rick. Oh, okay. That's an awesome dude right there. I miss him. Um, I have a one-on-one -on -one with the Rick. You remember those videos? I do. I was in one of those also. That was a lot of fun. Um, I thought that was before you, but <laughs> it was. But I I uh, stole one of his videos and chopped it up and replaced someone else. Are you else serious? With me. <laughs> yes. Oh, it was a... an it was an April Fool's video. <laughs> Oh, that I think, is. I think it's the only April Fool's video I ever did. One on one, Seafood Aquatics one on one with the Rick. Oh and my I, god! Uh, I don't know who I cut out. I don't remember. It's been so long. It was probably you. <laughs> it might have been me. Because I'm you know he would he would like ask the questions and then they would just send in a video response. So it was really easy to chop it up and put myself in there. <laughs> yep, that was before live streaming. I, I think that might have been like, like 2014 or so. And I can remember him describing me as one of the biggest channels. <laughs> I was like, what? I think I, I don't know. I don't know how big my channel was, but those were the days. But Yeah, and Curtis says, uh, hashtag bring back the Rick. That was like my thing for like a year of trying to get the Rick back on YouTube. I have his email address. I have his phone number. No, I don't have his phone number. I have uh, another, it's not his phone number. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. No, I do have his phone number because I, he was a guest on my podcast uh, and I had his phone number from that. I've, I've tried to contact that man every way that you can contact people and he hasn't responded. I mean, he he's nothing to do with it. I, I know, his, I know out. his Facebook. He's updated. He updates his Facebook. Does he? Yep. Yeah. It's him and it's cichlid man. Oh nine, both accounts that people cloned and trolled me on, which I still think was you, Bob. Uh, it wasn't. those two guys, huh? It wasn't. Oh, well, those two guys, uh, I miss those guys. But the story is all too familiar. People gung-ho on YouTube and then they just disappear because it's just too much. And I get it. It's sad, but it happens. All right. Well, I don't know how we got on this YouTube rant, but I'm going to bring it back either. to fish. I don't know. <laughs> you get a couple of YouTubers on a live stream. We're going to talk about YouTube. It just happens. <laughs> uh, but somebody said something about Ick would using Paragard. Okay. Would Seachem, Paragard, or IkX be better to use? Um, I have used both successfully and unsuccessfully at treating Ick. So um, I'm sure I'm sure the masses would say that IkX is better for treating Ick, and it probably is. But I have cured Ick with Paragard as well. I actually really like Paragard, but I use it as more like preventative. If I start to see something that's kind of funny. And I don't know what it is. Then I'll put some Paragard in there because it's pretty mild. It's pretty mild. I too have had success with IKX, um, but I've had more success with just heat and salt. But that's yep. just me. 
Yep, I've had... This is actually thanks to Rachel Leary. I've had a lot more success in a higher survival rate by putting in mass amounts of salt with any of my orders. So as soon as the fish come in, uh, if they come from Florida, I know that I need to put in a ton of salt for them to survive. And it has helped quite a bit. Hmm. And Matthew Vargas says, did you ever get those Kamakas in? Nope, I ordered um, two or three dozen and they completely left them off the order. So I did not. But they will be on the next order and maybe I'll get them in that time, I don't know. Can I, uh, can I tell you an interesting story that happened to me today that involves fish? Only if it's actually interesting. Well, it's interesting, but I don't have quite all the details that I really need to truly make it a, a wonderful story. Because, you know, this happened four hours ago, and I already don't remember the name. But I went into uh, a fish store to buy Lisa some meds uh, for her tank. And a video coming about that, hopefully, Lisa Marie. Um, and the owner of the store greets me in there, and he says, Hey, I got you're into oddball fish, right? And I said, Oh, yeah, I mean, sure. He says, I got a fish back there that we just got in. I've never seen it before. I've never had it. And it's really mean. You can't put anything with it business. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> See, he, he, he takes me back after a little bit. You know, we chatted for a little bit, and we go back and look at it. And they look like mud skippers, but they're not in the water, out the water. You know, they're... It's, they're fish. They're in the water, but they're the body shape looks kind of like mud skippers. And uh, he had written on the tank, "Must be 21 years old to buy these, poisonous." And I'm like, I've never seen these things before. First of all, where's the poison? Second of all, are they poisonous to other fish or just us? What like? Wh and he's like, "Oh no, if they bite you, it's poisonous. I don't know how dangerous they are. I don't know if it's going to kill you or if it's going to hurt you. But you know, I just I was told they're poisonous. I'm like." Why? <laughs> what is this? You have what? What are you doing here? But they were cool looking fish. I mean, but that's the thing. Like, yep, I'm gonna buy this fish. I have to make sure I don't get poisoned by it, and I can't put any other fish with it. Uh, it just doesn't sound appealing to me. I said no, thank you. But a mystery poisonous fish, and it's a freshwater fish. It and and that was that's what was funny about it because he was like. Yeah, they're poisonous to us, just like lionfish. And I'm like, but these are freshwater. I, I don't, I don't know of poisonous freshwater. What is this thing? It was called like the red bearded something weird. I, I don't remember what it was called. Uh, I, red, I, I, I want to say it was red bearded something. They were like twenty one dollars a piece, and you had to be twenty one to buy them. It was a cool looking fish, but not for me. So Moonstone says, how do they not know? And I will answer, um, a lot of places will just send you fish whether you ordered them or not. Or, um, and it happens a lot more with importers than from wholesalers though. You order this many of this fish, they won't have it and they'll be like, oh, he ordered 75 Rummy Nose Tetras, we're out of them, so let's send him 75 Oscars to make up for it. And they won't even ask, they just do it. Yeah, and another thing they do is they'll call you and they'll be like, we've got this really cool fish. It's really awesome. Everybody's going to want them, and we're offering them at this super discounted price. And they basically, they're salespeople. They sell you on this fish, and you're buying something you don't know anything about. It happened to me. Yeah, it's like when I got the uh, the freshwater blenny. Uh, they were like, freshwater blennies. We're, we're keeping them in freshwater. And I'm like, do you have the scientific name? And I get the scientific name and I'm like eh, it's not freshwater I don't think it's freshwater oh yo, no 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 we keep them at freshwater we keep them at freshwater then like two months later they come out with the list and they're like these do better with salt added they do better in brackish tanks I'm like I freaking told you guys I told you somebody suggested could it be freshwater stonefish GRB aquatics that might be it I'm looking at that right now oh now I gotta look that might be it. It's a very uh, prehistoric looking fish. Looks like a dinosaur. It's a neat looking thing. Uh, but 
I mean, I just clicked on monster uh, on a monster fish keeper post. Um, oh, they're pretty neat. Uh, this one. Those are pretty wild looking. Yeah, it, let me, I'm pulling up another photo of it here. Um, it, it's actually called the. Mm, I don't know if this is it. This one says freshwater lionfish. That kind of does look like it. That might be it. But I swear the name was like red bearded something, because I I know it made me think of uh, like a bearded dragon. You know what I mean? There you, oh, go. There you I just, go. I just covered you up. There you go. I see that. It's smart. Yeah. Let me click on images here. Then yeah, look at the that same thing. Work very well. No, I think I see it. Uh, Something yeah, like I th I think this is it. The no Nototheus <laughs> Robusto. <laughs> We're super zoomed in on you right now. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I think that might be it. <laughs> Bob Kaler says, sounds like a, uh, oh, sounds like a fish story. I, I was going to say fishy. It's a fishy story. Fish. Yeah, the story sounds fishy. Yeah, I should have got them on video, but I didn't want to be disrespectful. They also had like 50 Arapaimas in a 220. They were little ones. I did get video of the Arapaimas, though. Did you buy they one? They were. No. <laughs> we got all that room now. You should get an indoor pond. You can't see it on my. It's not going to show up on here, but. And I don't know if I can share my screen, but. Here's the video of the Arapaimas. I wonder if I can't see it yet, of course. They, they, you can see it. Yeah. There's a the little video of the Arapaimas. You should get iPhone one and 11 send it to from, me. Huh? Get, get one and send it to me. I can't uh, legally have them here, so I need you to send me one. Really? You can't legally have them? I'm pretty sure they'll, they're, yeah, they're illegal here. Hmm. Well, they should be illegal because they get 12 feet long. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I seriously. Just like common plecos, they just should not be sold in the hobby. Well, I own one of those, but I'm doing the right thing. I've got them in an eight-foot tank. They're going to be fine. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's that's going too far as far as I'm concerned. Arapaimas, they shouldn't be in the hobby. But you know what? That tank was full of them. There's probably 50 of them in there. They'll all be sold within a month. I, yep. I mean, it just they sell them like crazy. And they'll end up in some lake or some river somewhere. Uh, is anyone else allergic to bloodworms? Every time I feed bloodworms and I accidentally touch my face, my face blows up. It's pretty common. I am not, but I've heard about it a lot. Um, Bob agreed on common plecos, yeah. Like, obviously, if you're putting them in an eight-foot tank, you're doing just fine, but they just get so abused. I mean, I did a whole video about it, so you're telling me. The I most I was supposed to be in that video, but I was lazy. In my common pleco video? Wasn't that in your 10 fish that shouldn't be in the hobby or whatever? No. Uh, well, that was one of them, yeah. But I we actually did a, an entire video that was the, um, the title. I'll, I'll get you the title. It's easy to find because it's one of my most watched viewed videos. <laughs> Shame on you for not being in it. Uh, I know. Where is it? One of the most mistreated fish in the hobby. Uh, 10 things you should know about common placostomus. And I have an albino pleco on the thumbnail how many um, views does it have 246,000 views yep it's a lot of people that would have seen you bob Shame that's on more you. than all my videos combined and the one uh 10 fish fish 10 fish that shouldn't be in the hobby anymore you know the one that you were supposed to be on yep 607,000 views yep i know and my answer was the common pleco too <laughs> kick yourself in the butt i might have been mad at you and then what that, was the one that I ended up being in? It got like five views. Well, it's because people don't like you on my channel. I told you. No, you were on, uh, it, it's done well. It's not one of my most watched videos, but uh, you were on the, the mass collaboration that I did uh, where we had 18 other YouTubers. I'm trying to go through it here. I'm trying to find it. I guess I could find it easily with the playlists, but... Uh, we had 18 YouTubers do the most common mistakes that they've uh, made, and that was what you were a part of. That's a good one for YouTubers, though. 
I don't remember what your mistake was, but... Uh, I don't know. Probably killed some fish. Oh, you know what it was? It was the, uh, like, whatever your, uh, like, why am I drawing a blank? uh, You sucked a bunch of fish into your pump and grinded them up. Oh, that's that's right. Yep. Thanks for reminding me. (laughs) (laughs) Still trying to find it here. Uh, Um, Moonstone with the $20 super chat cool chat happy to support thank you my friend I appreciate it and also the membership thank you very much thank you thank you thank you uh, mistake uh, that... of not keeping shell dwellers Sean I have shell dwellers I've had shell dwellers for like six years the same colony is still going strong the video you were in is 117,210 views 2,600 likes and 82 dislikes all well, 82 clearly you should have put me in the thumbnail would have got way more views I didn't do a good job on the thumbnails of that one uh, on the thumbnail for either one of those videos it's very true a lot of text one big solid color a gradient color actually not solid uh, yeah didn't do a good job on the thumbnails but you know 117,000 views you could have had there. Or you did have there. Sorry, you did have there. But you left a lot on the table by not being a part of the other 100,000, yep. Just from being lazy. That should be a lesson to everyone here in the chat. Don't be lazy. Yet every time you've asked me to be on your live stream, I've been like, sure, Bob, anything for a friend. That's because you benefit. I don't benefit from being on your channel. Really? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I would hope it would be the other way around, but I don't know. Hey, anytime you've asked me to come on a live stream, I've come on. Live streams are so much easier than making a video. Just so saying. you'll sit down for, I mean, five and a half hours on Fish Room Fever's live stream, but you won't make a one minute long clip for me. I see. Okay. That makes sense. Totally makes sense. I'm just I'm just afraid I don't want you to disappear for a year and a half again like the last time. <laughs> I'm too deep in now. I'm not going anywhere. In too deep. So Petco has commons and there are a lot of tanks. Yeah, somebody said, and I don't know why this is a thing, uh, but I agree they should raise the price of common and lower the price of Epistos. I don't know that that's the way to do it, but I think Epistos, not Epistos. A pistos? Wait, what? <laughs> Raise the cost of common, lower the price of bristle nose. Which I don't. Again, I don't think that's the way to do it. I just think bristle nose should be cheaper because, like, how are they not? I feel like bristle nose should be as cheap as guppies for how much and how fast and how easy they are to breed. But any any pet store you go to, like a bristle nose, is three or four times the cost of a common pleco, which makes no sense to me. Yeah, and they're like an inch and a quarter. They're teeny, and they actually do. They actually have a job for your aquarium. You know, they clean up your algae, whereas common plecos don't do anything but create more poop. Common plecos are really good for diatom algae. I've found, like on rocks and stuff like that, they'll clean it up in twenty four hours. But that's about all they're good for. Yeah, and they and look they get good. nine feet long and in, in your ten gallon tank. <laughs> but no, I mean I agree that the. Uh, for every one person that's putting a common pleco in an appropriately sized tank, there's probably a thousand that aren't. And so that was kind of that point of that whole video, you know, the one that you didn't participate in. And uh, it was like, hey, you know, I'd rather see these these fish not be available than to see them get mistreated the way they do. So um, someone, someone says, how about just stop selling common plecos if it was only that easy? Yeah, you'll I never mean, see them on my website. If I ever, if I ever opened a fish store, I would never keep them ever, ever. They they serve a good purpose, but they're it's no different than buying a red tail catfish. Well, okay, maybe they don't get as big as red tail cats, but you understand what I'm saying. It's like it's it should be that specialty customer that's buying one of these, not somebody that's going to take them home, put them in a 55 gallon tank because they have green algae on their glass and they want that fish to to clean it up um so and but it's never going to be that way there's millions of them in fish stores right now so it's one of those fish you will have just as much luck getting rid of those from the hobby as we would goldfish it ain't going to happen oh i mean yeah another uh, yeah i've 
I don't even know what to say. There's so many fish to get abused. <laughs> it's just, what do you do? There's there's nothing you can do except for do your best to educate. That's that's what I try to do. And, you know, because you're not going to get them taken out of the hobby. <clears throat> I paid eight bucks for four-inch chocolate bristlenose last week. It looks to be a female, though. Uh, well, that's not bad. That's actually a really good price for an for an adult, a young adult bristlenose plecos. And eight dollars. That's that's a bargain. I know most uh, most of them that size sell for like twenty, which still blows my mind because there's ten billion of them. <sighs> Even candy could breed bristlenose plecos for crying out loud. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, folks. I'm kidding. I'm going to get you so yelled at. Um, what else do we got going on? How, you, how dare you speak ill of candy? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since she said that she bred um, a pistogram of cockatoides, and I was like, well, they're so easy to breed. My dead grandma could breed those. <laughs> I get, I got a, I got a, I got a jab every once in a while since then. <laughs> Ten easiest fish to breed. Part of a ten. Part of our ten things series coming soon. Ooh. It is in the queue. So what are would they? You, would you like to be a part of that one, Bob? Perhaps. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'll I'll do it right now. That's what you told me before. Oh, so okay. Let me turn my screen recording on. Yeah. You can just make it right now. <laughs> one of the top ten easiest fish to breed is the bristlenose plecos. Back to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you want to do it, do it. You want to you want to record that for us? Do it. You can be a part of that one, and hopefully it gets that video will do well because there's a lot of people that would see that and go, oh, cool, fish to breed. It's not going to be difficult to figure out what those ten fish are going to be. I'm going to be honest with you. It's pretty easy to figure out, but it's going to make for a great video. Convicts. So, that's not on the list, but it could be. So Bob Kaler with the twenty dollars super chat says, "Great channel. Thank you, my friend." Uh, enjoy participating and supporting Bob. I appreciate everyone's participation and you supporting me, Mr. Bob Kaler. Thank you very much. Um, there was something else I was going to say, but I just forgot. It'll come back to me. Are you uh, editing a video about a guitar player? Well, it's for one of my other channels. Hmm. A full list of library. Yeah, any library. What was I going to say? Oh, man, it was going to be, like, mind-blowing, too. Game changer. I don't know. It'll come back to me. Lumpy hey, Bob, what's up with the computers on the green screen? It's a green screen. Uh, how about a 10-fish species that you can't stop from breeding? <laughs> That's a great those one. Too. That is a great one. Um, and actually, it would probably be the same 10 fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you could see you could make two videos out of one. That's right. Just change the title, now and there thinking. you go. <laughs> uh, Pam says today I saw a woman with two kids buying ten feeder goldfish, and she had a fish bowl in her hand. That is the worst. That is the absolute worst. I was in, um, I don't remember what fish store I was, Petco, PetSmart. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. But a lady was like, she was on the phone with whoever was telling her to buy fish and she's like yeah I need three of those sucker fish and the guy's like well do you mean a pleco and she's like yeah the one that sucks on the glass and eats the algae and she and uh, he's like what size tank she's like it's a 10 gallon <laughs> and he's like well they get pretty big and she's like well my husband tells me I need three of those sucker fish so I just need to buy three of the suckers and I'm just like oh, poor fish I mean she could have been talking about autos I mean that's true, and honestly, if it was me and I had autos, that's uh, I would have been like, here you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean that would Here's make your the most common sense. Here's your pleco. You're not gonna know anyways. <laughs> I mean, if that if if some idiot is telling his wife to pick up three common plecos to put in a ten gallon tank, that guy needs to have his card taken away because well, yeah, that's... But also he's saying sucker fish, like she said, he's telling me I need to buy three sucker fish. So that sounds like autos to me. Uh, that sounds like just some dude that doesn't know anything about fish that just wants common plecos because they they eat algae and suck on the glass. 
But you, you, you got a much more positive spin on that story than I do. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we're going to wind down and end this chat and this live stream. This has been a lot of fun. I want to thank you, John, for coming on here. Like you said, um, you almost always come on when I ask you to. So I appreciate I think it. I... I think I might have to take a break, though. I'm getting a bit overwhelmed. Uh, not because of you, but I'm on this stream tonight. I'm on Multi-Tank Addiction la tomorrow night. I gave we've you like our... a two-week break. I know. And we've got our stream on Thursday. I, I might take a, you know, after this, I might take a break for a month or so. Not from YouTube, but from being on other YouTubers' channels. You're here to hear, folks. He's going to disappear for a year and a half. Nope, nope, nope. Lisa wouldn't let me do that. <laughs> All right, well, I want to thank Jobs Aquarium Tanks, Matthew Vargas, Moonstone for becoming a member, Pirate Man, Pri Pirate Teary Man, I don't know, for becoming a member, KG Tropicals member, Michael Gervino with the Super Chat, Bob Kaler, Super Chat, Matthew Vargas, Super Chats, Moonstone, Super Chats, and I think that's everyone. If I missed you, I apologize. But I want to thank everyone for hanging out, liking, sharing, commenting lurking all of the above it has been a lot of fun it has any last i didn't words? add a whole lot but no last words any last words oh no it, it was fun for me too I, I feel like i didn't really have a whole lot to add uh tonight but uh but it was fun i always enjoy coming on here you know that so uh thank you for having me and thanks for everybody hanging out with us poor clickbait nonsense i don't even know what that means but clearly you do not either so anyways Thank you guys. I'll see you on Thursday.